No way. Good grief. How are you joking? That can't be true. My goodness, I wonder if it'll even go ahead now. I wish I was in the... I wish I was in the congregation for the... What? Oh, so, I'm so sorry. I was just reading my emails. Uh, it is three minutes after ten. You are listening to James O'Brien on LBC, where we turn our attention first this morning to an absolutely extraordinary story that I'm afraid is yet more evidence of my journalistic instincts being... Hmm, fair to middling at the very best. It was on Tuesday that the I newspaper reported... Uh, it reported reports that Robert Jenrick, a Home Office minister, fondly known as Honest Bob Jenrick by fans of sarcasm and satire, had ordered Starford and Asylum Centre, a children's asylum centre, to paint over murals on the grounds that they were too welcoming. Now, it was somebody who I think had reportedly accompanied him on that trip around the centre that had given the uh, instruction, but that individual was not was was reluctant to be interviewed or to or to go on the record. And and I'm a big fan of the I newspaper, as you know, a huge fan actually. I think I think it is doing a, a fantastically good job in an incredibly um, uh, necessary field. But uh, I don't know why. I just I think I think I just thought I ju it just can't be true. I think I just thought it can't be true. It's so crass and so ob obviously awful behaviour that I found myself thinking this this must be a miscommunication. It must be that they're they're simply tarting them up a bit, or there's another explanation. And and I should have I mean I should have trusted the journalists on the I newspaper. They wouldn't have got something like this wrong. But I work from a slightly different um, uh, palette in the morning. So I, I you know I'm looking for things that a we can talk about and b that are interesting. If you need conclusive proof of how wrong I got it on Tuesday, Sheila Fogarty waltzed into the studio at one o'clock and dived straight into this story to devastating and, and, and powerful effect. But I think I naively... Do you know what happened? Come here a minute. I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell, I, I, I didn't want it to be true. I so desperately didn't want it to be true that I convinced myself it might not be. I do not want to live in a country where a senior government minister orders cartoon characters on the wall of an asylum centre in Kent for unaccompanied children to be painted over because they create too welcoming an environment. I, I don't want to live in that country. And it turns out I do. So on Tuesday, I let you down. I referred to it at the top of the show and I said, and there is a story... I referred to it quite obliquely. I don't think I gave you much detail, and I said I'm just I just can't believe it. So we're going to give we're going to give Robert Jenrick the benefit of the doubt this morning because I cannot believe that this story will be as gross as it appears to be. But it is. Yesterday, the Home Office confirmed that the murals had been removed on Tuesday, the day that the I published its initial story. Mr. Jenrick Stott told staff at the Kent Asylum Intake Unit, a bespoke building designed especially to meet the needs of lone asylum-seeking children to paint over the art in April. I'm going to read that again, because sometimes, some days, some mornings, you've got to pin your ears back and recognise what we've become. Not what we are becoming, what we, not what we will become if we don't halt the direction of traffic soon, but what we have become. We have a Home Secretary, of course, who dreams, dreams of the front pages, applauding her for deporting these children, potentially, to Rwanda. But here it is. Mr Jenrick told staff at the Kent Asylum Intake Unit, a bespoke building designed especially to meet the needs of lone asylum-seeking children to paint over the art in April. The minister felt the murals gave the impression that the UK was welcoming to asylum seekers who crossed the channel in small boats, sources said. We had, um, well, what were they called? What were those characters called? It'll come to me in a minute. We, 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 Charlie and Lola. We had Charlie and Lola decals on our walls, like, like you know, stickers, big stickers that you, you could put up. And the kids loved them. Different generations will have had different 
characters, wouldn't they? You know, the, the, the idea, you go to the doctors in the little corner of the doctor's surgery that's reserved for children, and there'll be a, 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 you know, a nice picture on the wall, a couple of paintings maybe on the wall, a cartoon characters, a little table with some Lego on it or, or a few toys, a desperate and sometimes quite forlorn attempt to make the place more welcoming for children. And that'll be children who haven't got post-traumatic stress disorder, who haven't fled war or famine and not been in contact with their families for weeks or months, who've been through untold hells and privations in pursuit of just this notion of security and safety that the United Kingdom still somehow manages to represent in some corners of the globe. And then they get here, and Robert Jenrick thinks that a picture of Tom and Jerry on the wall is too much, too kind, too warm, too welcoming. Now, there are mornings when I lump people in together. There are mornings where I would generalise fairly bluntly about people who, for example, support Suella Braverman's despicable Rwanda deportation scheme, although it would appear... There aren't that many of them. Certainly didn't appear to be any in the Question Time audience a couple of weeks ago. But I'm not going to do that today. I don't care what you and me have disagreed about in the past. I really don't. You might be still the biggest Brexiter in Britain. Uh, You might think still that Boris Johnson was worthy of your support and your vote. You may be immune to all of the evidence that you've been conned on a scale that British politics has never seen before. You may even be a fan of Nigel Farage. You can't support this. You don't support this. Nobody supports this. So how do we talk about something where I honestly believe possibly a couple of performative applications to Idiot's Corner notwithstanding, I I honestly believe we'll be pretty close to unanimous. I mean, even if you you, you don't want unaccompanied children to come here because perhaps their uncle lives here or their family member has made a life here and they can find shelter in their homes. Even if you don't want that, you can't possibly think that news is going to filter back to Kabul or Calais that there are no longer any Tom and Jerry cartoons on the wall of the Children's Asylum Processing Centre in Kent. Therefore, these two boys, these these two children are no longer going to make the journey. Oh, no, let's not do that anymore. They've taken down the pictures of Mickey Mouse or Tom and Jerry or whoever it may have been. 11 minutes after 10 is the time. So how, how do we do it? Imagine if this was another country. In fact, someone's made that point already. Imagine if we heard this, says Chris, if it was China or Russia or North Korea. I genuinely hate the people here who lie and call themselves public servants, adds Chris. I'll tell you what, if this was happening in another country, we'd probably be we'd probably be hearing from Amnesty International already. We'd be doing some sort of fundraising in order to get some money down to Kent to help them put the walls, put the murals, put the cartoons back up on the walls. We would, wouldn't we? If, if this was in, uh, you know, a... a, a behind the Iron Curtain type country, if it was an orphanage in, in communist Bulgaria and the news filtered out, maybe, maybe I, I don't know, maybe John Simpson went in and did a report and the news filtered out that this bleak vista where desperate, vulnerable children are more or less confined had been rendered even less welcoming by a political decision to remove a few cheery cartoons from the walls. And I came on the radio the next morning and said, let's just raise a few quid, shall we, for this Bulgarian orphanage. Let's send a few quid to Bulgaria and make sure we get some pictures back up on the walls by tea time. We can do this. We can sort this out. We would, right? Except it's not happening behind the old Iron Curtain or in Kim Jong-un's North Korea. It's happened in Kent. And it's happened upon the orders of a Conservative minister, a member of parliament, a home office bigwig. The minister felt the murals gave the impression that the UK was welcoming to asylum seekers who crossed the channel in small boats. Yesterday's confirmation that the murals had been removed came after three days of repeated inquiries to the home office. Three days. What's wrong with Robert Jenrick? 03456060973. 
I, I wondered whether I would ask you another brilliant point. It's exactly what the Taliban do in Afghanistan. Isn't it? It's, it's idolatry or that there'd be sort of fundamentalist religious reasons for the Taliban to do it. I find it easier to get my head around why the Taliban would take down cartoons from children's facilities in Kabul than I do to get my head around the idea of a conservative home office minister doing it here. I was going to do something. Maybe I should. But I balked at it because it was so bleak a question to hit you with at 13 minutes after 10 on a cheery Friday morning. I, I wondered how you'd explain it to your own children. Actually, let's do it like that. How would Robert Jenrick, does he have children? Can we check? How would Robert Jenrick explain this to his own children? 0345 6060 973. So, a couple of little Jenricks, three little Jenricks. See the news today. In the back of the car, breaking up. Mum doesn't turn it down quick enough. They hear O'Brien banging on as usual about their dad ordering the removal of cartoons from an asylum centre, a bespoke building designed especially to meet the needs of traumatised, terrified, vulnerable children, lone asylum seekers. And their dad gave the order to paint over the pictures. And they turned to their mum, perhaps, or later today to their dad, and they said, Why? Why? O three four five six zero six zero nine seven three is the number you need. How would they explain it to their children? Because I'm not sure that I could explain it to mine. The reason I say that is not because the words don't exist. I could explain it. I'm not sure I'm ready to introduce... Well, they're 17 and 15 now, but when they were younger, I'm not sure I would want to in any way introduce them to the fact that they live in a country governed by people possessed of opinions like this. I'm not sure I could do it in a way that didn't... Traumatise is too strong a word. What's the right word? I'm not sure I could explain this story, this decision, this man, to my children in a way that didn't upset them more than I would want to do. I don't think I could do it. 03456060973. How would you do it? How would you explain it? And if that is too high a hill for you to climb this morning, not sure I can climb it. Let's just have a look at what's wrong with him. What's wrong with him? Because I sometimes say to you, the cruelty is the point. You've heard me say that a few times. Trump, I think, was the person about whom it was said with the most uh, certainty. The cruelty is the point. It's, it's the people like the cruelty. The cruelty is the point. But this, I don't think this fits into that category. Braverman means it. Braverman lives it. Braverman dreams it. This dude would be to the left of Keir Starmer if he thought it would advance his career. He'd be to the left of Jeremy Corbyn. He'd be to the left of... I need to say John Lennon, but the Russian fella, Lenin. He'd be to the left of Lenin if he thought it would advance his political career. That level of grasping opportunism is the only other qualification you need to advance in today's Tory party other than the, the, the sort of base nastiness of a Suella Braverman. So he's not doing it. It's not like there was a newspaper campaign to tear down these murals. Even the Daily Mail wouldn't stoop that low. Asterisk. Mm. I hope. I, 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 no, hand on heart. I couldn't even imagine Sarah Vine writing an article about how disgusting it is that these terrible, traumatised, terribly traumatised children have a few pictures of a few cartoon characters on the wall in their specially built, their bespoke... <sighs> bespoke building designed especially to meet the needs of lone asylum seeking children even though think of the worst columnist in the country will be here a while even they wouldn't write an article about why we must paint over these murals paint over them now 12 pages 12 days of daily mail front pages paint over the murals we're sick of these murals you just they wouldn't do it would they so why has he done it what's going on in his head when he walks into that room it's not going to get any brownie points for it 
Is he too thick to understand that nobody's going to turn around and shake him by the hand and say, nice one, honest Bob. That'll teach those traumatised children not to get into those death trap boats after traversing half of the world in pursuit of a semblance of security that they have somehow clung to the notion we might offer or provide? What's gone through what passes for his brain? I'm not allowing him the possibility of a conscience. Sorry. There can't be one there. There can't be a conscience. Just the brain. Just the mind. Just the consciousness. It pops into his head. I know what I'll do now. I'll tell him to paint over these murals. <sighs> I'll tell him to paint over... And then he turns to someone, another human being, and says with his actual mouth... This is too welcoming. We've got to paint over these murals. What the hell happened to him? 